Hey guys, Alan Bishop back with the One Piece at a Time Distilling Institute, the channel where I do my absolute best to help you out in any way I can with your home distilling or your professional distilling. Uh, as always, please feel free to reach out to me at bishopshomegrown at gmail.com or at um, any of my social media or in the YouTube comments. So uh, I was sort of perusing one of the forums earlier and I saw a question pop up. I believe it was on Raw Gut Moonshiners <clears throat> and figured it'd be easier to make a video about this and to actually type out and answer the question one way or the other. So the question was basically, have any of you ever ran strawberry brandy? And if so, were you successful with it? And if so, how? And I saw a lot of good responses on there. Um, nothing wrong with any of the responses that I saw, but I wanted to point out maybe a, uh, a little different version um, that you guys may or may not be aware of that has worked very well for me over the past. So you can do these things with a thumper. You can obviously add extracts, etc. You can add the actual raw fruit into the thumper, maybe even a series of thumpers like a Tennessee thumper, get that steam extraction going, etc. right? Um, one of the things I've had, for example, very good luck with over the years is with a Tennessee thumper taking something like um, Alpine strawberry and dehydrating them. It takes a lot, I'm not gonna lie basically turning them into a powder, <clears throat> putting them into a little alcohol in the jar, and then extracting that powdered alpine strawberry into the spirit. It's a lot of work to do that, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, what you'll find is with a lot of the more watery fruits, it's very hard to pull the flavor off of those through a traditional method of fermentation and distillation just in general. Uh, this is particularly true of things like blackberries and raspberries and strawberries and blueberries. Can be very true of apricot and peach as well. Um, I love traditional peach brandy and traditional apricot brandy, but a lot of people get disappointed in it because they think they're going to get just a ton of peach or apricot flavor, and it doesn't really work that way. So most of the time, when you're running peach or apricot, and I'm just using this as an example, um, what you're going to get is if you're a pretty good distiller, you're going to pull off a decent amount of the aroma of the peach or the apricot. But flavor-wise, what you're more than likely to get is maybe a little tiny hint of the peach and then something that resembles, and this is a term from beer, beer brewing particularly, and whiskey, something that, that more often presents itself as diacetyl, which is almost like um, buttered popcorn, like movie buttered popcorn. That's often what you're going to get off of peach or apricot. Um, if you want to make something that has a little bit more flavor to it, there's an old German method of doing this. It's called uh, making a Geist or a blank run. And so what you would do is you would do a normal double pot still distillation on whatever you want your base alcohol to be. And now that base alcohol can be um, brandy that's fermented from those fruits if that's what you want it to be. Um, or it can be a neutral grain spirit or uh, a sugar shine. Uh, my preference is either a neutral grain spirit or a sugar shine. Uh, honestly, a sugar shine, again, like we talked about with botanicals, with raisins and oats, taking it up to 170, that little higher proof, uh, right? A little bit more on the neutral side, but with little residual flavor. Um, and then you make your cuts just like you ordinarily would. So make your heads, hearts, tails cuts. Uh, try to hold on to that high proof stuff and take your hearts. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take one to two pounds per gallon, <clears throat> whatever the gallonage would be at 80 proof, not at the high proof, okay? Because you're going to have to prove it down before you distill it. And you are, so you basically, you're going to say twice whatever your volume of your hearts is. <clears throat> or not, yes, twice whatever the volume that you're going to macerate in is, okay? Um, you're basically going to take that alcohol, heat it up to 100 degrees, uh, with that fruit in it at 1 to 2 pounds per gallon again, okay? That's called a digestion. Then you're going to let it set for 24 hours. That's called a maceration. Now, that is in the, case, in the case where you are actually macerating and digesting in the still. So you're putting the solids into the still, and that's only if you have agitation, obviously. You don't want the solids in the still if you've got a flat bottom still or elements inside the still. If you have elements in the still or you use a flat bottom still using propane, etc., my suggestion would be still take the alcohol up to 100 degrees um, at the high proof. You know, 135 to 170 is pretty good for extraction. Uh, and then take that alcohol and pour it over top of the fruit that you want to extract from. Uh, before you do this, it's nice to be able to freeze that fruit first, uh, to break down the cell walls a little bit, and to also kind of obviously grind up that fruit, mash it up, whatever you want to do to get your flavor out of it, right? Um, then I would let it set for a week because there's going to be a big difference between a geist run that has solids in it still 
because you're gonna get more extraction that way and one that doesn't have solids in it still because you can't run it for fear of scorching your still. So I would let that version that you don't keep solids in in the still macerate for at least a week. Um, then you're gonna rerun this and you're gonna treat it just like you would a gin or an absinthe or an aquavit or a botanical spirit of that nature. You can take a very small fraction off the front where you compress the pores and also where you tend to get some off flavors very early on in those sorts of runs. And then you're gonna collect your hearts. Now you're only going to collect your hearts down to about 120 or so because again you have compressed everything and so you're going to drop off the tails at a higher proof than you ordinarily would. But this is the best way to me to be able to get those those more watery style fruits to actually taste like what you want them to in a brandy and it is a traditional style of doing this. Uh, obviously a little different than what's being recommended on a lot of the forums and that's why I wanted to put it out there because it is something different. But it's also something that's worked well for me. Now, I will say this, some of those fruits, strawberries in particular, and blackberries, the seeds of those two fruits tend to be a little bit what they call phenolic. So they have a little tangy taste to them, a little maybe what some people might call a, a wild taste to them, um, maybe a foxy taste. Those all might be things that you may or may not be familiar with. What I'll say with them is if you don't like blackberry jam and strawberry jam, and you're more of a jelly sort of person, you're probably not going to like the distillate that comes off of uh, doing that whole fruit like that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know of a great way to remove the seeds of those before you do this, uh, but bear that in mind. This is going to be a representation of the entirety of that fruit, and it's going to hold on to a lot more of those flavors that you want. As well, you got to remember that some of the water that you're distilling over is actually some of uh, the water that was bound as juice to those berries. So you're obviously going to pull more of that across as you distill and subsequently have a more intense flavor of whatever that first fruit was that you were starting with. So uh, again, this is not the only way to do this. There's a lot of other ways to do this as well, but this is just the way that's worked for me. I've done this at work with blackberry brandy in the past, black, we call it blackberry eau de vey. Um, I've done it at home with apricot, I've done it with peach, I've done it with strawberry. Um, and I've, I've tried a lot of different methods to be able to pull the flavors of those fruit. I mean, you spend a lot of time picking those things or a lot of money buying them, you want to get the best representation of them that you possibly can. And this is the best way I've found to do it. Now, it doesn't mean it's the way that you guys need to do it, have to do it, or even want to do it. But it's another option out there on the table for you. And I hope it helps you out. And if it does, let me know. Uh, let me know if you try to make a Geist and what you made it out of and what your method was and what kind of flavor you got out of it. Or if you need me to clarify anything I've said in this video, feel free to ask. But reach out to me, bishopshomegrown at gmail.com, in the YouTube comments or on social media. Uh, I started one piece of time to help people. And uh, I'm loving doing this. I love talking to other distillers. I love trying to help other distillers, whether they be home distillers or professional distillers. And I'm going to keep on rolling, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, do the best I can. Y'all have a great day. I love you. I'll catch you later.